please join me for the call to worship. People of God, today we welcome Jesus into our hearts just as he was welcomed into Jerusalem with the waving palms and the shouts of Hosanna. We journey together beyond the cross to meet our God of love. We open ourselves to the spirit that calls us to worship. So come now, people of God, rise as you are able in body and spirit and let us wave our palms shouting Hosanna. <laughs> God, we thank you for this day. We shout our hosannas and sing loud to you on this day, as we know that Christ came into Jerusalem on that journey to the cross. So be with us now as we come to worship this day with you and for you through your Son, Jesus the Christ. Amen. You may be seated. Good morning and welcome to worship on this wonderful Palm Sunday morning here at Milwaukee Metropolitan Community Church. <laughs> If you're worshiping with us online, we welcome you, and if you would hit the like button or leave us a message in the comments so we know that you're worshiping us with us this day. Those of you who are here in person, I've hopefully got your palm crosses this morning as you came into worship um, with your bulletins and as we continue to have a great uh, Palm Sunday worship. Reminder, after worship today, we are having our Palm Sunday potluck, so stick around uh, for some good food and some good fellowship. and continue to have Palm Sunday together. This coming Tuesday, the board will have their meeting at seven o'clock here in the uh, 
community room. So if you're interested in what's going on in the life of your church, you're welcome to come join us and check out what the board is doing. As I'm sure everybody is aware, today is uh, the end of our Lenten challenge offering. Um, I'm sure they'll call and give all the instructions on how we're going to collect that, but we will um, pray over the Lenten offering uh, as we do the second offering this morning, so um, I'm glad everybody brought that. Also, today is the last day to order uh, Easter flowers and lilies for next Sunday, so we can adorn the sanctuary with beautiful flowers as we have the Christ risen in our lives for Easter Sunday morning. This coming Thursday, as we come into Holy Week this week, we are joining forces with our sisters and brothers from Christ Church United Church of Christ, Bayview United Methodist Church, and Tippy Canoe Presbyterian Church. All together, we are getting together on Thursday evening for a wonderful uh, Monday Thursday uh, communion and foot washing, hand washing service um, that will be at seven o'clock at Christ Church, and they're located up on. Oklahoma Avenue, so come join us and be a part of our congregation to represent Monday, Thursday. Then on Friday evening, we're kind of moving up the street. Um, the same four churches are getting together for Good Friday. We are doing a communion and ten embrace service. It will be at seven o'clock as well, but at Bayview United Methodist Church, um, we will get together and have that memorable eve of the reencountment of Christ's resurrection. And then the next Sunday morning, we will raise our voices and pr proceed to have a wonderful and joyous resurrected Easter Sunday morning. Worship will be at 11 o'clock, as always, here in the sanctuary. But come bring a friend for Easter and uh, enjoy the, uh, the, the joyous of the Easter celebration. Wonderful music next week. Uh, we have some guest musicians with us, so come be a part of Easter worship. And with that, that's all I have this morning. So as we continue with worship... Let us hear God's word. Good morning. Our Hebrew lesson this morning comes from Isaiah chapter 50, verses 4 through 9, taken from the Inclusive Bible. Exalted Yahweh has given me a skilled and well-trained tongue, so that I can sustain the weary with a timely word. God's awakened me morning after morning, wakens my ear to listen like a student. Exalted Yahweh opened my ears, and I have obeyed. I did not turn away. I offered my back to those beating me, offered my cheeks to those who would humiliate me. I did not hide my face from insults or spitting, because exalted Yahweh helps me, insults cannot wound me, for I have set my face like flint, because I know it will not be put to shame. My vindicator is at my side, who would dare accuse me? Let us confront each other, <coughs> who are my adversaries? Let them accuse me. It is exalted Yahweh who helps me, who will judge me guilty? All of them will wear out like a piece of clothing. Moths will devour them. May God bless the hearing of these sacred words. <laughs> This morning comes from Luke's Gospel, chapter 19, verses 28 to 40, taken from the Inclusive Bible. 
Please stand as you're able. After this, Jesus knew that now all was accomplished, and to fulfill scripture perfectly, he said, I am thirsty. There was a jar of cheap wine nearby, so they put a sponge soaked in the wine on a hyssop stick and raised it to his lips. Jesus took the wine and said, It is finished. Then he bowed his head and gave up his spirit. Since it was preparation day, the temple authorities asked Pilate to let them break the legs of those crucified and take their bodies from the crosses. They requested this to prevent the bodies remaining on the cross during the Sabbath, since that particular Sabbath was a solemn feast day. So the soldiers came and broke the legs of the first one and then the other who had been crucified with Jesus. But when they came to Jesus, they found that he was already dead, so they didn't break his legs. One of the soldiers, however, pierced Jesus' side with the lance, and immediately blood and water poured out. This testimony has been given by an eyewitness whose word is reliable. The witness knows that this testimony is the truth, so that you will believe. These things were done to fulfill the scripture. Not one of his bones will be broken. And again, another scripture says, they will look on the one whom they have pierced. After this, Joseph of Arimathea, a disciple of Jesus, but a secret one for fear of the temple authorities, asked Pilate for permission to remove the body of Jesus, and Pilate granted it. So Jesus came and took it away. Nicodemus came as well, the same one who had first come to Jesus by night, and he brought about 100 pounds of spices, a mixture of mirth and aloes. They took the body of Jesus, wrapped it with the spices and linen cloths, according to the Jewish burial custom. Hear what the Spirit says today. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. Amen. Amen. Let us come to God in prayer this morning. Blessed is the one who shouts our hosannas to you. May our hosanna with our bodies be open now that we might hear you and know you and receive you. May your spirit touch us anew and afresh with this good news of the revelant gospel of Jesus. And through the inner workings of your spirit living within us all, may we hear your voice this day, calling us forth as your disciples. So I ask God that I pray that you would touch my lips of clay, mold them into the words that need to be spoken this day, 
And may the words that come from my mouth and the meditations on each and every one of our hearts, may they ever be acceptable to you. In the name of Jesus Christ, in whom we pray, Amen. Amen. So over these past several weeks, we have been engaged in our Lenten and Easter series titled, Imagine. And over these last how many weeks, we've been exploring what it would be like imagining a world that we could reclaim our treasures in, a world without power struggles, a world without suffering, a world where everybody is welcomed, and last week, imagining a world of selfless love. Which brings us today, Palm Sunday, a time of our church year where our journey to the cross and we reflect on Jesus' arrival into Jerusalem, trying to understand how this event speaks to us today and what it teaches us. This particular event that happens each year is something that we call Jesus' triumphal entrance into Jerusalem. But when you really think about it, was this really a triumphant event? What if you look at it from an outsider's perspective? What would that look like? Because if we look at this, a, th a 30 years of conceited is a long time of a history. But maybe not too long when we are that eternal God who created all time and space and everything around, but it's also something that is quite long for the eternal God especially if it's the time spent in human flesh. But that time is not just spent waiting for the day when Jesus would accomplish his mission, but also will suffer and be killed on a cross, as we heard, but also sacrificing himself for the salvation of those demanding his death. Believe it or not, Jesus' entire life led up all to this one week towards the next few days that would be spent in Jerusalem and those last few hours that would change the course of history forever. We would know Jesus to each of us to listen to him and that he must go to Jerusalem to suffer from the hands of the Jewish leaders, ultimately to be killed. But we know Jesus had been foretelling this story again and again, even to the point his opponents got the message loud and clear. And now, finally, the time had come, that Palm Sunday, when Jesus was heading to Jerusalem to full and fill his mission, to suffer, be killed, and to fulfill what the Holy Spirit had revealed through the prophets. Now, would you describe Jesus' arrival as one being triumphant? I think we need to refresh what the context of all of it is about. Jesus is arriving into Jerusalem. We know that all through this, Jesus had been teaching and preaching, doing all so great of things with authority, while also exercising his authority, but also experiencing people not fully understanding him. Well, at least not during that particular time. Jesus, as we know, had compassion towards people, and so often his intentions and in the way that would be hindering his own mission in life. But he kept helping people while healing so many. People from every corner of the earth were seeking him, bringing them their sick and their demon possessed ailments, and whatever Jesus saw and saw in with them, he would see their pain and take it with compassion. Now, if that wasn't miraculous enough of what Jesus was doing, Jesus also managed to do things which caused people also to tremble and to be in fear, especially when he would rebuke the storms, walk on water, and even raising those from the dead. We have to remember that not too bef far before coming to Jerusalem, Jesus had raised his dear friend Lazarus from the dead. And we know Lazarus only lived a short distance from Jerusalem. Many had seen and experienced this happened and had come to see Lazarus 
After all, he was raised, and many believe that Jesus was someone very special doing that. Even the Jewish leaders were aware of what Jesus had been doing. And what no one could deny is all that this so-called Jesus person was acting out of unordinary with strength and extraordinary powers to do his will. And all this time, the expectations of the people were growing more and more, and this little nation that had lost their freedom had nothing to do other than to wait on this Messiah, this Savior, this promised God in their lives to come and deliver them from all their enemies. But the time was right, such as scripture tells us, and of the chorus of who couldn't tell and do more of a perfect job of this than Jesus. And now, Jesus arriving into Jerusalem, accompanied by the crowds of his disciples and followers. <coughs> and here, clothes and branches were spread on the road for him, as they shouted, Blessed be the one who comes in the name of the Lord, peace in heaven and in glory in the highest to you. And even those among the leaders who had decided to capture Jesus and murder him, seeing openly arriving into Jerusalem, could only say to one another, not much. You have to stop and ask yourself, how could Jesus, of all people, how could he feel about what was happening? How easy it could be misunderstood how easy it is to carry our own burden, especially where there is no one else there to help you. If you think about things a bit closer, here you have Jesus, <coughs> already who had turned himself over to the right hands of his enemies, and those people at that point had really no clue who Jesus really was. Jesus was coming to hand himself over to the enemies to suffer and to be killed for the sake of us all. But who was accompanied and also <coughs> failed to understand or even understand who Jesus really was. So we ask, who is this? The crowd said, this is the prophet Jesus from Nazareth of Galilee. Jesus, just a prophet from plain, simple Galilee. <coughs> Sadly, Jesus was so misunderstood that his arrival was also misunderstood. His mission was so misunderstood of the same situation that many of us feel today. People misunderstood Jesus. People misunderstood what Christianity was about and what it means to be Christian. Even churches get it wrong to this day. We are the church. We are called to love and to care for all people. We have no enemies whom we ever need to overpower politically, but Jesus hadn't come to ensure that everyone was healthy and well-fed. Yet he had that compassion on people. He helped them. He even fed them miraculously. And if anything, these things often hindered people from hearing Jesus' message and understanding what that true mission was. <laughs> Now we too, as disciples, are also to care from whom God has placed in our lives in one way or the other. We are to serve them and to help them in all their bodily needs, knowing that this is not the main purpose for us being the church. We are invited as people to return to the true God of our words, and not only our words, but the words of Jesus himself, and the Holy Spirit who accompanied us. This amazing miracle of how Jesus continues to walk through us whenever you witness him, whenever you share that message, that Holy Spirit is working through you and through the hearts of the people. We too are often misunderstood, and it's not the wonder that we share the faith and the rejection that Jesus did as well. Too often people think that Christians are just more one more group of society who fight over that power and that influence, trying to impose on everyone their own ideas. The gifts that Jesus has brought us through his death and resurrection 
is that forgiveness and eternal life. We live in this world, but worldly things should not be our ultimate concern. Our hope is to set the world to come, our own life with Jesus. Jesus came to Jerusalem misunderstood and was rejected, and we often are as well that same person. If we can learn anything from what happened on that Palm Sunday, is that we don't have to have a need for any protest in our lives. But if people recognize that Jesus riding into Jerusalem on a cult was a parade or a protest or even a funeral procession all in one, the parade was dusty and poor and homemade by comparison with the parade on the other side of town that was glamorous, rich, and shiny. So who noticed? The protest march was a bit more subtle with one man's humility at the center. I'm not sure anyone noticed the power at that moment. It was also, though, a funeral procession that Jesus would later, wouldn't later get. And I doubt anybody knew that at that moment as well. Palm Sunday is the beginning of Holy Week, the most sacred week of the Christian year. Many folks will attend worship on this particular Sunday and we'll raise our palm branches and sing our hosannas. They will wear witness of the betrayal of the death of to what is to come next Sunday. Jesus rode into Jerusalem to face the fear, the anger, and the hatred. He knew that he wasn't to live, to leave Jerusalem again. He knew that the people bound by fear are capable of great acts of betrayal and violence. He knew that they would likely give no fear long before they would embrace love. He entered Jerusalem trusting God that God would make it right in the end. Yet many of us have lost our way. Palm branches and hosannas won't get us there. We'll need to bear the witness to all that will come. We need to ask ourselves if we have taken that mantle of service that Jesus demonstrated when he washed the disciples' feet. <coughs> Palm Sunday is merely and simply a parade that we replay year after year. Maybe this year is the year that we notice that all this day entails. Maybe this year is a year that we will commit to accompanying Jesus through the whole week and recognize ourselves in the crowds that will gather. Then maybe we'll be ready to ask ourselves what being Christian really means in a world that has not changed very much so over 2,000 years. I bring blessings to you this morning, Milwaukee Metropolitan Community Church, as we say, Hosanna, Hosanna in the highest. Amen. As we come to our time of offering today, reminder to fill out your green keeping in touch cards and include any praise and prayer requests on the back or any updates to praise and prayer requests so that we can update the weekly. Those of you watching online, feel free to leave us a comment or a like so we know you're watching today or when you watch it. And also, if you have a praise or prayer request, call the church office or leave us an email. We'll be glad to add those to the list. Today, we're having two offerings. The first offering today will be our normal Sunday offering. Take a moment and, and close your eyes and imagine that you're the one who has to stand up here and call for the offering. <laughs> what would you say? Do you need to find something cute or funny to say as part of offering? Do you need to give a little sermonette? Do you need to comment on pastor's message this morning? I say that for you to think about it because it's not just the board members who come up here every week and call for it and have to find something to say. This offering is all of our responsibility. It's our responsibility through our commitment to stewardship, to our tithing, to our giving, whether you're a member of this church or you come 
it is the funds that we use in order to keep this church afloat, to pay salary, to keep the lights on, to do all those things. So it's a responsibility, but I hope it is also a blessing for you to be able to give to this church. So as I pass the first collection plates around this morning, please give as you are able. So our second offering today is our 40-day Lenten challenge. As we started this, I challenge you to take a little extra time for these 40 days as you put your money into your box, that you spent a little special time during this time of Lent to think about what it means, to get maybe a little closer to God, to Jesus, to think about what a great sacrifice and what a wonderful loving gift that we receive. So 40 days. But as I think of those 40 days that we spent doing this, I now think of five days. How fast five days goes. How fast five days can change. Jesus is coming in triumphantly today with Hosanna and people excited. And five days from now, people are going to be yelling, crucify him. How fast things change in our lives. So... If you didn't get a chance to bring your box in today or you're giving a check or money and you need to do that next week, you can certainly write that on the envelope that is part of the 40-day challenge. If you uh, forgot to bring it, those of you watching at home, you can certainly mark your gifts as you give them online for the 40-day. I really hope and pray that it was an opportunity for you to really get closer to what this season means for us. And as we go into Holy Week, um, that this too, that this offering was a blessing for you. So as we come to the table on this Palm Sunday, if you're worshiping with us online and you haven't already done so, we invite you to get your communion elements so you can take part in this meal as we come to this table this day. May God be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We open our hearts to the coming of Christ. Let us give thanks and praise to the God of love. It is right to give thanks and praise. It is truly right and our greatest joy to give you thanks and praise, O God of love. You brought bread from the earth and created the fruit of the vine. You made us in your image and freed us from slavery. You claimed us as your people and called us your children. And when we forget, you spoke to us through the prophets calling us to return to the way of the heart. Therefore, we praise you, joining our voices with the heavenly choir and with the faithful of every time and place, forever singing the glory of your name. your child our Lord whom you sent to live among us and in humility Jesus descended from your heights to kneel in obedience to love's command and death Christ freed us from death's dominion in the resurrection Christ opened the way to eternal life on that night that he was to be betrayed Jesus took the bread gave thanks broke it and gave it to his disciples saying to take and to eat for this is my body which is given for you do so in remembrance of me when the supper was over Jesus took the cup from the table giving it thanks and giving it to his disciples saying to drink this to drink all of this for this is the new covenant of my blood poured out for you and for so many 
for the forgiveness of sins. Drink of this often and do so in remembrance of me. As we eat this bread and drink from this cup, we remember the life, the death, and the resurrection of Jesus Christ. Will you pray with me? It is here at this table that we gather, where our tears will be wiped, our brokenness be made whole, our weariness be transformed into service, and you pour the gift of your spirit on us. And the gifts of this feast, the bread which is broken becomes the strength which fills our emptiness so we can be with those whose sighs are not heard through our hangry words. And those with the closest friends with our grief, whose lives are mocked by the power, the cup which overflows with grace becomes the nourishment we need to join our voices with the voiceless, to gather the little children who are lonely, to listen to the hearts and who are all are forgotten. And when you bring us home at the end of all time in history, we will join our sisters and brothers who have been remembered by you in every place and every moment and serving you through all eternity, God in community, holy and one. Amen. praises of Hosanna, Hosanna in the highest. As we go into this week, let us go into the week of solemnness. So now as we go out into the world of this day and each and every day, may we go out into the world through God's protection and tender mercies as we know it to be through God the Creator, God the Savior, and God the Holy Spirit. Go in peace. I invite you to sit for the post-lead.